Thanksgiving. My name is Dar Rath, and uh, I am the pastor here at Faith Lutheran Church in Port Elgin, Ontario, Canada. We record our services, and they are shown on our website and on Sogging Times online newspaper. So welcome everyone. We have several guests here today, which is really nice for Thanksgiving. And we're missing a few who are also celebrating with their families at home. I'm sure they've come uh, from far and wide. We were in Burlington yesterday with all of our family and the kids have flown in from University and Calgary and all over the place. And so we had a wonderful time. And thank you so much, you're, you're here. Uh, we have our guests from Florida Actually, they were baptized here in the spring, was it? I can't believe how these children have grown since they were baptized. It was wonderful. So welcome, everyone. Uh, it's a day for us to count our blessings, for sure, and uh, think about God's work in our lives and how thankful we are for each other. Now, I have a bit of a joke to tell you. I do that every once in a while. But here's a humorous story. If you know Helen Hayes, she was a, an actress. And this is a little joke she tells on herself. As she retired to the kitchen to put the finishing touches on a Thanksgiving dinner that she was preparing, she warned her family, this is the first turkey I've ever cooked. It, if it isn't right, I don't want anyone to say one word. We'll just get up from the table without a comment and go down to the hotel for dinner. She returned some 10 minutes later to find the family seated expectantly at the dinner table wearing their hats and coats. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So next Sunday is a special Sunday here for us. It's Gospel Sunday. Usually the place is full and rocking because people bring their friends and, and neighbors and four fiddlers are coming. Adria is going to play gospel like you've never heard in your life before. And uh, so it proves to be an awesome Sunday. Now, wasn't Pet Sunday something else? It was amazing. I saw the pictures of it and, uh, and this big floppy-eared uh, rabbit uh, here with us, and Piper, and uh, and Charlie, and uh, forget all the names of the dogs. Um, Reggie was here too, and um, and uh, Cardin's dog had his paws up for communion, so I just gave him communion. <laughs> I mean, he thought, oh, I was giving treats out to everyone, you see, and so he was there, and it just was automatic, you know, sort of thing. I do give communion to the pets when I go out to the houses, if people have pets and we have communion. So any other announcements? There is one very special announcement here today. These flowers here, these beautiful flowers, are here for us to appreciate in honor of Dave Spatzel's birthday. So give us a wave, Dave. today is not the one that's written in the Celebrate Bulletin. Uh, it's different in that these are produced by the Americans and they have Thanksgiving in November. And so I've changed the Gospel reading today for one that's more appropriate for our Canadian Thanksgiving. So let's begin. I'm going to start out, before we sing a hymn, I'm going to do a little children's thing here and then they can get off to Kids Club. But, um, Let's talk about blessings. You don't have to come to the front. They apparently don't like doing that anymore because I you know, talk to them. But I'll talk to you this way. Tell me about some of the blessings that you have, things that are really deep in your house that you <coughs> have that you like. Some of your blessings. Think of it. Your family and your pets. What kind of pets have you got? A dog. A dog? Two dogs? Oh, nice. 
What's their names? They have really weird names. They have weird names. Okay. <laughs> and what about your blessings? You got some blessings? It's nice to be at Grandma's house, isn't it? All the way from Florida. Right. That's a blessing, isn't it? Grandma. How about you girls? Got some blessings? Friends and family, for sure. Absolutely. Do you like cranberry sauce? You never tried it? Okay. Do you like cranberry sauce? No? Do you like cranberry sauce? How many of you like cranberry sauce? You have to have it. See, it's a kid's thing. They just don't like the taste of it. It's a bit sour or something, so I think it takes a while to get sort of a taste for it. Do you like cranberry sauce? You've never tried it. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so we have a lot of blessings in our lives. And one blessing was that God sent Jesus to us, to earth, so that we could learn how to live good lives. And so there's a song called Jesus Loves Me. And in sign language for the children, Jesus is like this. Why would that be? Do you think the sign of Jesus is like that? Because he had nails in his hands, right? Jesus loves, this is loves. Everybody loves me. Okay, now Adrian's going to play the song, Jesus Loves Me, and I want all of you to do the signs. Jesus loves me. When we get to it. Okay, we're ready? Everybody ready? Put your bowls in sound. Okay.
starts on page 94. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning from us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and renew us and lead us, so that we delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, going to the greeting, which is on page 98. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Thank you. In peace, let us pray to The readings, first readings from Isaiah. Let me sing from my beloved, for my beloved, my love strong concerning his 
vineyard. Okay. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He, ex he expected to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants, inhabitants of Jerusalem, the people of Judea, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had, to, had not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the people of Israel and the people of Judea are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Morning. Psalm today, Psalm 80, you can sing by a whole verse. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. To be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised by the eighth day, on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but from that comes but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may retain the resurrection from the dead. <coughs> now that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. 
Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on forward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for gospel acclamation. Thank you for For tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Isn't that amazing? Can any of you worrying add a single hour to your life? I am a professional worrier. I am a professional worrier. For example, the other day I was fussing about this camera and recording and trying to learn all this technology about uploading or downloading. I'm never sure whether which it's uploading or downloading. I'm never sure. But anyway, um, I was getting in a bit of a fuss here the other day and uh, Julie and Sandy managed to see, uh, get me in the perspective here of what was really this about. And so, um, our, uh, over the past weeks, our gospel readings have encouraged us to focus on some pretty heavy-duty stuff. We've been, uh, that's why I stuck the pet, study, su pet Sunday in the middle of it, because uh, it was getting pretty heavy-duty stuff. For example, we were talking about fairness. Is God fair? Is every, everything, anything fair? We were talking about forgiveness. And that's the most difficult thing. And the gospel reading today was about rejection. And so it's Thanksgiving, and so uh, I wanted to, I read this wonderful passage about worrying, and I wanted somehow to tell you or convey a personal story to you that seems to me there's something that somebody here is going to learn something from this story. And so it's a personal story. I have never, ever told it to anyone. I told it to my grandchildren yesterday for the very first time, and they were like, with their mouth hanging open. So here goes, I spent a lot of hours up in the midnight thinking about this, and so I'm going to tell you this personal story. Uh, when my father returned from the Second War, from overseas, my sister and I were one and two, and we decided that, he decided that he didn't want to be a father, and he didn't want to be a husband, and so he just left. He left the country. Since my mom had to work, we lived with our grandparents, sometimes on the farm in Alvanley and sometimes in Owen Sound with my grandparents there. And so I grew up knowing that there was a father somewhere in this world that really didn't want us. There were no pictures, his name was never mentioned, but it was a true feeling of rejection when you're a child. 
Now, my mom remarried when I was around 10 years old. We moved to Guelph. My stepfather was pretty much the most amazing person ever. He continuously encouraged me to get a good education. So uh, I think he overdid it a bit. <laughs> but fast forward. I went to high school in Guelph and nursing school in Guelph and got married to this cute guy with a brush cut and a 57 Chevy. And uh, we moved to Burlington and we had our first son. And I was uh, 25 years old at that time. Well, the phone rang one Saturday night. And this man said, hi, Darlene, this is your dad. I'm in Hamilton, and I wondered if I could come and meet you tomorrow. I said, now look, who is this? He said, it's your dad. I've looked you up through your grandmother, and I would like to meet you. I hesitated, and I said, well, I, I guess you could come. You could come tomorrow afternoon, it's fine. So when I hung up the phone, Merle said to me, well, who was that? And I said, oh, it was my father, and he said, oh, how are things going? And I said, no, it was the real father. <laughs> and he said, really? I said, yeah, really. I said, he's coming tomorrow. Oh my gosh, he said. Well, I became quite anxious and about that since I'm a professional warrior. And since the children have gone to the uh, kids club, I will tell you this. I was nursing, breastfeeding my son, and after I hung up the phone and realized what I had done, all the breast milk dried up. <laughs> because you're just so anxious. So I just uh, increased the fluids. I think it was a bottle of beer, actually. <laughs> In those days, you were allowed to do that, but I don't think they do that anymore. <laughs> But I did, I got in the bathtub and had a bottle of beer and then I was fine. <laughs> but when he came through the door the next afternoon, he appeared very calm and quite gracious actually. He said that he realized that this was really hard for me and he said that he really wanted Merle and I to ask him all the tough questions. And so I made a cup of tea and Merle and I got to know this man and boy, I asked him all the tough questions. And I think in the bottom line is that you need to realize that the men who went overseas for that war were not the same who came back. That's all I'll just say about that. But we really liked him. We liked him immediately. He was funny, he had a great sense of humor, he laughed easily, and I found out that he was very musical and he loved to dance. He had never remarried. He had a couple of girlfriends that would do his ironing and invite him for supper, but he would take them dancing. He was open and seemed sincere, and my sister looked exactly like him. He lived in Los Angeles, which was strange because my sister went to university in San Francisco. So that's another story. It seemed a bit odd to me. Now, I could write a book about our conversation over those few cups of tea, but he ended up staying with us for five days so that we could get to know him. I think he came to find me to ask for forgiveness, even though those words were never spoken. After he returned to California, my stepfather came for a visit the next weekend. And he said, it's good that you get to meet your real parents. Everybody should have that opportunity so they could talk to them. So we kept in touch with my uh, birth father um, from time to time. And we actually went to Las Vegas one or Los Angeles one time when the kids were 10 and 8 and 10. And uh, we, we went for a week and we met his friends and we had a very good time there. Now, I chose to tell you this story because it emphasizes the focus of the topics of the last few Sundays. A couple of Sundays ago, we were focusing on the fairness of God. Is it fair, some things that happen to people? Sometimes in life, other people make choices for us because we're maybe not old enough, or maybe we're too old and we can't make the decisions. 
Was life fair for my sister and I as children? Of course, of course not. But it's all about where you're born. And life is full of challenges. And so you flip this to the blessing side. Weren't we blessed to have grandparents who would look after us instead of us going into foster care? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with foster care, but we didn't have to do that because relatives offered to look after us. And by the way, both our grandmothers taught us to pray. They read the Bible to us. And that's where that started. And what about forgiveness? We spent a whole Sunday here talking about uh, forgiveness, and it's really one of the most difficult things we have to do in life is to forgive people. In my heart, I eventually forgave my father. It took a little bit of time, and I needed to understand that war. I spent years reading about it. And maybe some of you couldn't find forgiveness in that situation. Some folks in my family, did not forgive him. <laughs> Yesterday, I was telling my grandchildren, two grandchildren about this. They had never heard this story before and didn't know about uh, my real father. And my granddaughter, Sophie, who's 15, 14, how old is Sophie? 13. 13, oh my. <laughs> so many of them, there's six of them now, and they're, they're all different ages. But anyway, she's 13, and I was telling her this story. She said, Grandma, I would have hung up the phone. <laughs> so you see, it takes time sometimes for forgiveness to happen. On the blessing side, our children got to know their grandfather. And they liked him. And he would come to visit, oh, I don't know, maybe a couple of times. We had so much fun with him. He was a comical person. And they brought joy to his life. Now, there's an important note in here, and that is that my stepfather always remained my real father in every single way. Now, today, I'm thankful to be thankful. I'm thankful that you are thankful people, that you are blessings to others. Giving thanks reminds us how blessed we are. And it's not to say that we don't have problems and worries, because we do. But most, for most of us, our blessings far outweigh any burdens that we have. So, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? I offer these words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have to tell you, that was very difficult to decide to do that. And I, I have a feeling that somehow there's someone here who is maybe going to learn something from it or get a message from it or something. I'm not sure, but I probably won't talk ever about it again. <laughs> again. So let's stand and sing this wonderful hymn. Lord, let my heart be good soil. celebrate bulletin. They're a bit lengthy, so I'm asking you if you could sit down and I'll read them. Let us pray. 
Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of all grace, you are the source of life and joy. Strengthen and resolve of your church throughout the world, that together we press on toward the goal of your heavenly call in Jesus Christ, God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard. Bless fields and orchards and the hands of those who labor in them, that your people are fed with an abundant harvest of good fruit. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all the earth, you desire peace and justice between nations and peoples. Guide leaders of nations, states, provinces, cities, that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom, integrity, and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all compassion, in Christ you lovingly poured yourself out like wine for your people. Have mercy on all who mourn, who struggle with their mental health, who cry out for justice, who hunger, and all in any need. In our church family, we pray for Doug, Ken, and Nancy, Bonnie, Jean, Marie, Fred, Gail, Mike, Ron and Sandy, Fran and John, Mary Lou, Annie, Gwen, Savannah, Heather, Lindsay, Gloria, Amber, Irma, Marie, Ralph, Roland, Matthew, Elena, Bo, Riley, Dave, and Judy. And we pray for the family of Fred Boulette, who passed away last week. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all steadfastness, you see Christ as the cornerstone and foundation of the church. Build up this congregation as living stones, that it stands in the community as a witness to your enduring faithfulness and love. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all hope, the saints who came before us lived and died with their hearts fixed on you. We give you thanks for their faithful witness, and we wait with hope for the great day when we join their voices in praise. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your unending love and amazing grace through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. You could stand, please. Let us say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Thank you. Let us share the sign of God's peace with one another. The offering will now be received.
keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And may God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And our sending hymn is, God be with you till we meet again. <laughs> God.